Hi, and welcome to this quick start guide for Newton version 2.0. Newton, as you probably know, is the most awesome 2D physics engine for Adobe After Effects. Newton is not your average plugin. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even reside in the effects menu like most plugins do. That is because Newton works on all the layers in your composition, not just a single layer. Because it works on all the layers in your composition, you will find Newton under the composition menu. So if you select your comp under composition, you will see Newton 2. The user interface was completely overhauled to make it easier and more um, AE-like to navigate. So quickly you'll see here that this is your comp viewer. I'm holding the spacebar down here to get the hand to navigate around just like you would in the normal After Effects comp. All the layers in our composition were automatically loaded here into the bodies menu. Now they're called bodies because in Newton everything is a rigid body by default. Rigid body might sound like a fancy word if you're not used to physics simulations, but you will quickly get used to this term of bodies. By default when you first import your layers into Newton, they are all what's called a dynamic body. And by dynamic it means that it actually moves. So if we go ahead and right away just hit play, we'll see that everything just falls. It falls because we have a gravity of magnitude 10 and direction straight down or 90 degrees. So you can of course change this. If I just drag this little guy around, you can see it move the magnitude and direction. And so now the gravity is going sort of diagonal into the left and that's why everything just fell down that way. You can also enter things numerically so we can go back and enter 10 and 90. Well, that wasn't very exciting. Let's go ahead and change a few of these body types. So you can select things right in the comp viewer. So I can select these walls here. Now if I hold down the shift key, I can select the other one and then the floor right here. And you can see that they were selected down here in the bodies menu. I could have also just gone ahead and selected the layers here. Now holding down shift here, selected all of them up to here. If I wanted to uh, just select them, I would use the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows. So go ahead and select those three layers. And I'm gonna change the body type for those to be static. Now I can either do it by going to the general tab here under my body properties and changing the type to static or if you go under help there's an extensive shortcut menu so that you can actually do most things in Newton using keyboard shortcuts which once you get used to how much fun it is to play in Newton you're going to want to start using these keyboard shortcuts. So the keyboard shortcut to set these body types to be static is the letter S. So if I hit S on the keyboard you can see here that it just changed the uh, body type to static. So static means exactly that. It's not going to move. So when I go ahead and play this now, everything else goes dynamic. But as you can see, the, those three um, layers, if you will, stayed static. So now we're starting to get some interesting stuff going on here. Um, now, <clears throat> some more keyboard shortcuts. Now we want to change some like properties on these circles. So I could go ahead and select the circles here, like I said, by with holding the shift key or if I select one of them, either in the bodies menu or up here in the comp viewer, I can then hit the letter C, which will select all of the other layers that are the same label color. So in this case, these are all beige, so that's why it selected them. Again, another quick shortcut to improve your workflow in Newton. So what we want to do here is change the bounciness of these circles. So they're set to 0.3. If I just crank this up to 1 and go ahead and play this, you're going to see how things react differently now. Um, which is pretty cool because now um, they're super bouncy, which caused the basket to tip over because the basket was also a uh, dynamic type. You can actually uh, shorten your work area and set this thing to loop and just play with all of these things as it's looping. All right, so once you're done um, setting up your animation, let's say, well, let's go back and set this back to what it was. I thought it was too bouncy. So now I think this is a nice animation. Let's say I like this. Um, we're going to go over here and then to the export menu and just go ahead and export this animation over to back to After Effects. So as you can see here, the animation ended at around frame 84. So we'll just go ahead and enter the end frame to be, say, 85. Um, basically, uh, you have two choices. Do you want to apply it to a new composition or do you want to just you know, modify your existing composition. I usually create a new composition so that I can keep playing back and forth. And then 
um, enable motion blur if you want to have all your layers have motion blur turned on. And of course, that is a stylistic preference. And then you just hit render. One other thing to keep in mind is um, under file, there's a um, auto load save settings uh, feature and it's turned on by default. That means that when we go ahead and hit render, and so you can see here the progress. Now that when, when we left um, when we left the Newton interface, it created a new composition. In this case, my original comp was called Simple, so the new one is called Simple 2. And if we go ahead and preview this, you can see now that the um, you know the Newton animation is happening here. Newton sets a bunch of keyframes so that uh, that's how it does its magic. So once it's exported this composition, this is just a normal After Effects composition that can be opened by anybody with After Effects. They don't require to have Newton to open this. So this is a really great way of um, working with other people. If you create your animations in Newton, you can share this with other people. Now, the reason I showed you the save setting things is if we go back to our, let's say I, I wanted to make it more bouncy, for example, I can go back to my original composition. And when I go back into Newton, it automatically saved all my settings. So as you can see, these um, walls are, are, are still set to static because I don't know if you remember when we first went into it, everything was dynamic. So I can now basically pick up right where I left off and say, for example, I wanted to have all of these circles be more bouncy. I can just go be more bouncy. And now when I go ahead and render this out again, I'm going to get now a third composition. So as you can see, now I have simple two and now I have simple three. So I can now, you know, say decide I wanted to use this one. This one is the one that's more bouncy. So that's how the auto load settings works. If you don't have that turned on, then you need to manage your setting savings um, manually, which means that if you want to save what you had, you would go in here and say save settings and then you would need to like reload settings and you can save that anywhere on your hard drive. So it's also a great way of sharing projects with other people. So if you do something in Newton and you want to give it to somebody else who has Newton and they want to tweak it, you would want to save the settings and send those settings along with your project file when you send it to somebody. Okay, so let's just uh, go ahead and uh, get out of Newton real quick here and show you one other body type. And this is, um, here we're going to turn on a layer that's just a triangle that's animating in After Effects with just two keyframes here, as you can see. Uh, this triangle is just moving up. So now when we go into um, Newton, you can see that if we play this, well, first we got to select a triangle and say, well, what kind of body type do we want it to be? Um, it, by default, it's dynamic, which means that if we play this, it's just going to fall to the bottom. But there's a cool little body type called, um, well, there's two of them. One is kinematic, which means that we can have it respect the keyframes that are in the After Effects composition. And after the last keyframe, it's going to be affected by the physics engine. So if we play this, you can see that during its climb there it's unaffected by the physics in, in Newton but as soon as the last keyframe is over gravity in Newton takes over and then it falls down on top so let's just um, see that again so this here is kinematic but then let's say for example you wanted to have the keyframes as well as the physics engine then you go and you choose aematic which is a different body type and so now you can see that even though it was going up the gravity was too much for it to keep going up, but the little yellow dot indicates what the actual keyframes are from After Effects. If you wanted to actually stay a little bit closer to the to the keyframes, then there's a setting under AEmatic called the AEmatic Tension, which can be increased or decreased. So if we increase it, you can see here that it's actually a little bit closer to the, to the actual keyframe, but still has a little bit of playfulness. So... Um, Wow, man, there's just so much stuff you can do now in this new version that's that's just really exciting. Okay, we have a new composition now. Uh, this is a just a standard shape layer for the circle. And then the letter wall was um, a text layer in Illustrator that, I, uh, that we went ahead and chopped up into a bunch of different pieces. So as you can see quickly, um, they're just masked off into different uh, pieces. That's not the important part of this demo. That's important just to know that they're separated into separate layers. So we go ahead and go into Newton. And let's go ahead and set the floor to static. I'm hitting the letter S. And if we go ahead and just hit play, 
you can see everything just falls straight down. Um, I want to show you guys a new body type, which is the dormant body type. So we'll go ahead and select all of the wall, not the circle, and change the body type to be dormant. Dormant means that it's not going to be affected by the physics engine until it collides with another body in the scene. So since nothing hits it, it just kind of stays in place as if it was static, but it's not really static. If we go back and we grab the circle, this is a new tool here. This is called the velocity tool and the shortcut for that is the letter P. And if you've ever played Angry Birds, you're probably going to be very good at using this tool. So you select the tool and then you get this little green handle that as you pull out, you can see the trajectory vector for this body. So just like with Angry Birds, you kind of set your aim and then you hit play. And as you can see, the wall stayed in place until it collided with the circle, at which point physics took over um, and it started animating. It, it, it did it, you know, it did it as each piece was hit. So it's not like all of them started going at the same time. So very realistic in its simulation. The one problem with this animation is that it all kind of falls on top of itself, almost as if it was sandwiched all between two pieces of glass all, all in one plane. To give it a little bit more depth and make it, make it feel like it's actually falling, you know, in, in, in Z a little bit more. Let's go ahead and select all of the, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go ahead and select all the word types. And first we'll go ahead and change the body color here so that we can select it more easily. Then we'll go ahead and select, um, sorry, just um, select some random pieces probably not that one uh, so by the way did you see how I just um, accidentally moved it a little bit one thing I haven't shown you here is the history actions history uh, menu which is just like the history in Photoshop where I can just go back and undo so uh, there you can see I can undo the body color and then I accidentally moved the body so I just went ahead and undid that because I did not mean to do that so just keep selecting uh, various pieces and we'll go ahead and change the color of these pieces to a different color. And now what we'll do is under the advanced tab, we will go ahead and change these to B. As you can see here, we have collision groups. Everything is automatically in group A. What we'll do is go ahead and put those into group C. And we'll go back and grab all the blue guys. I'm hitting the letter C to select all the same colored layers and we'll put those in group color and group B. So now, um, the circle is in group A, the blue guys are in group B, and the green guys are in group C. So what we can do is go ahead and select all the green guys and say, we want it to collide with only with the stuff in group C. And we want the blue guys to only collide with stuff in group B. Right? So now, uh, when we go ahead and simulate this, oops. So we also have to, sorry, we also needed to collide with stuff in group A, right? Because the ball needs to actually collide. So as you saw, it just went right through them. So we'll go, go ahead and grin the green ones and turn on A as well. So now it's colliding with A and C, and then group B is colliding with B and A. So now when we play it, as you can see, now as you can see, the blue guys are not colliding with the green guys, which gives this animation a little bit more depth. It missed the, it missed these. So let's go ahead and undo there. Let's go ahead and select this and the velocity tool. We'll go ahead and just be more direct and with more force. So now when we play it, anyway, you get the idea. But so now by you having different collision groups, we have a little bit more of depth in our animation. One of the new features in Newton 2 is the much improved support for text layers that includes full alpha channel support. So if we go ahead and bring this into Newton, we can see now the all the, the all the text layers now have full shapes around the two uh, around the alpha channel. Um, one of the problems with this, however, if we make the floor static, is that because text has so much detail, they're not very well suited for physics simulation. As you can see here, it's not actually moving um, in real time. To compensate for this, um, there is a if you select all the text here, if you go under advanced, you can now use this new feature called use convex hull. So I'm going to turn that on for all of the text layers. So now you can see it turns the text layers into these um, much simpler shapes. So when we run the animation, it's now run in real time. Um, so what we do, and what's really cool is if, for example, if one of the, 
if 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 you just wanted to have say some of them not be convex hull, like say the word two D, if it if you really needed more precise interactions with that, you could have everything else in convex hull, and then now of course it's it has to deal with much less, um, even though there's still a lot of detail there. So uh, there's a lot of power there. So now when we take a look at the animation back in After Effects, you can see that um, even though it used the convex hull. When you see it in, in After Effects with the actual layers, it looks fully realistic. So this is new in Newton 2, and it is great. Another new feature in Newton 2 is magnetism. Here we have a comp with a bunch of shape layers at the bottom and this plus sign that's just animating from left to right. So when we go ahead and go into Newton, let's go ahead and zoom in. And we'll make the floor static. S and we'll make the outlines kinematic sorry uh, yeah kinematic and all the other shapes stay um, dynamic and then one of the last things we want to do is for the plus sign under advanced we want to change the magnetism type to attraction and you immediately see this red circle um, that's the distance, so we can make the distance a little bit bigger or smaller. That's so. So the basically the other bodies have to be inside of this red area for them to be affected by the magnetism, and then once inside, um, they're affected by the intensity. So if we turn this up, say to like 40, we go ahead and preview this. So as you can see, as they get into the magnetism f field, if you will, they get attracted. So that was probably a little too intense. Let's go back to 10 and go ahead and preview that. So that's magnetism. Very, very cool. If you're going to have attraction, you also, of course, need to have repulsion or really, she really likes me. No, really, she really does. Um, <laughs> so here we have in this comp, we have this solid that's just animating around. So, and then there's this white uh, wall. So when we go into Newton, we will go ahead and set the wall to static. And then we're also going to set the gravity to zero so that the items don't fall. And then we will go into the advanced for minus, turn on magnetism to repulsion. And we can bring the distance down a little bit. And so you will see now when we play this, that once it starts moving around, uh, sorry, we need to create uh, this to be kinematic. So once once it starts moving around, you can see how it basically pushes the other bodies away. My favorite new feature in Newton 2 is the addition of joints. Joints is a way for you to have a relationship between separate bodies in your physics simulation. So this square is animated but with keyframes and after effects. So let's go ahead and make it an aematic body type so when we preview this you can see that it is going by the keyframes but it's also interacting with the physical world in this case the ground here which is a static body so you can saw uh, as you can see it was having a hard time going up the hill so let's go ahead and lower the friction so that it glides a little bit smoother on this surface so now when we see that's a little bit better all right so now what we can do is Using just this animation, we can have it influence these other bodies behind it. So what we'll do is go ahead and select the circle and the square, and we will add a distance join between them. So we have the two layers selected, and then you just hit this button here. And what it does is it just added a distance joint between the two of them. So now when we preview this, you can see that it's just pulling the circle behind it now you can have settings uh, you can adjust the settings for how those two interacts by selecting the joint in this joint menu and then up here you're going to get the different properties in this case there are four different tabs for each joint type so for distance which is what we have now you can adjust the tension in the damping we're not going to go ahead and play with that now but just so you know that they're there now we can go ahead and attach all of so we'll go ahead and delete this guy so i'm just going to delete it and hit the little delete button there so now I have them all selected, and I'm going to go ahead and add a distance joint to all of them. And so now when we preview it, you can see that it, um, it's pulling them all behind. Pretty cool, right? 
Of course, we can also use the convex hull feature here to improve performance. So if we select the characters and we go to advanced, we can turn on convex hull. So when we preview this, it's going to have better performance for the letters. Another joint type is the pivot type. So we'll go ahead and select all of these squares here. And the second button, button here is a pivot joint. So when we add the pivot joint, now you see these little circles here representing the joints. So now when we preview this, you can see that they're going to rotate um, as they collide. Um, the options for the pivot joint are under the pivot joint property. So let's just select all the joints. And you basically can enable the limit on the upper and lower angles. So for example, we can set a 10 degree limit on both the upper and lower angle. Sorry, minus 10. And so now when we preview the same animation, you can see how the rotation is being limited by, uh, to 10 degrees, both up and down. The third joint type is the piston joint. I'm going to demonstrate the piston joint by making the triangle a static body, and then I'm going to connect the circle with the square with a uh, distance joint. Then I'm going to connect the triangle with the circle with the piston joint. So the piston joint is the third button here. And it basically, uh, think of it just like a piston in a, in a car. It's going to have this sort of fixed um, translation axis between these two bodies. But unlike the distance joint, it's actually going to allow the body to travel along that axis. So if I go ahead and play this, you can see now that it's like the distance joint, but it's actually going to let this other body sort of translate on that, on that um, axis. You can modify the axis by selecting the joint and then grabbing the anchor tool, which is this tool right here. Um, the shortcut is the letter J. And then you can just basically move the axis and now it's going to move along that axis. And lastly, we have what's probably going to be the most fun of all the joints. <laughs> it's the spring joint, of course. So we'll go ahead and make the, both the squares static objects and we will connect the this triangle to this square with a spring joint and we'll do the same for the circle and the square here and we'll do that so as you can see here it puts the little springs so now when we uh, preview those you can see how that's a little bit mild right now we can go to select the both of the joints if we go out here under the joint properties for spring we can actually increase the length of the spring so we can make the spring a little bit longer so now when we preview it you can see that's probably a little bit too much but as you can see how much fun you're going to be have <laughs> you're going to have playing with the spring joint so you can adjust the springiness the damping and of course the desired length of the spring and just to wrap up the entire uh, joints as well as the quick start guide, I want to just pull up the keyboard shortcuts menu so you can really get familiar with it. Like I said, this is going to be really helpful to, to get to learn these. But for joints specifically, uh, you can see here, for example, for distance joints, there's a couple really interesting shortcuts. You can do alt click to create a shortest distance joint, or you can um, hit command alt shift and click to create a triangulation joint to um, simulate a soft body, for example. So we'll leave that for your exploration. This has been the quick start guide for Newton 2. I hope you guys have as much fun as I've been having playing with it and looking forward to seeing some awesome, awesome animations out there with it. Thank you.